few days after we got married, Carla suggested we sell everything, buy a boat and set sail. A year later we did just that. In the Canaries, we picked up our naked sailor, Dobby. This is our adventure. So this week we're going to talk about the cost of the barge, what we have paid for her and how much, we, how much time did we spend on her. We've uh, kept a record of our expenditure and uh, we're going to share that with you in quite a lot of detail. Yes, yeah, so we are also going to tell you about our plans for when we get back to, from Portugal, how are we going to finish the boat and get her into the water. So let's jump in and have a look at the costs so far. If you haven't been following from the beginning of this project, you will know that we just finished week 21 of working on the boat. You will also remember that we have paid for her £60,000. Yeah, I think it was actually quite a fair price really, because there's a lot of unknown with the boats. Uh, for example, we've got the engine, a nice big Vitas engine, but um, it's never been used. And, uh, you know, there, there was actually quite a lot of risk. So, yeah, first of all, it looks like an absolute bargain. Um, and it may well turn out to be that way. But, uh, yeah, it was a bit of a, a risk. risk. And yeah. it still is a risk, to be yeah. fair. Yes. Yeah. We have split the cost into the following groups. Uh, cost of purchased. Lifting, shifting and storage. Uh, the fit out. Electrics. And everything else which is on deck. We also have a column uh, for tools. And this isn't really a genuine cost for the barge as uh, these tools are getting used for other projects in the future. Mm -hmm. And also, we did actually have a lot of tools before we went away on our sailing trip, yeah. mm -hmm. which we actually had to dispose of. Mm -hmm. So uh, all in all, uh, we're not really including the cost of tools into the project. But we have spent £1,162 so far on uh, power tools, mm -hmm. uh, planers, uh, screwdrivers, um, mm -hmm. uh, saws Drills, and all that sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Purchase costs. As we, as we said, the boat cost £60,000. She was built about 10 years ago and for personal reasons she never got finished. The boat included many other items including the Vitus engine and the generator the heating system and the whole load of equipment for the final fit out. Yeah, there was an awful lot of things included with the boat, including a windlass and things like that, but there's also, surprisingly, how much stuff you still have to buy. Yeah. I mean, even down to the anchor, we had an anchor chamber, we didn't have an anchor. Yeah. So the next item on the list was lifting, shifting and storage. You may well remember, but uh, we bought the boat, uh, it was actually in a farm in the West Country down by Bath. And uh, though the farmer could tow it to the end of the uh, farmland there, we actually had to get a crane to lift the boat off the cradle. And then we had to get a yacht transporting truck to uh, transport it 100 miles from Bath uh, to Windsor. And once we got to Windsor, we had to get it lifted off the trailer. The trailer by the boat yard. Oh, by the boat yard. But they obviously had uh, travellers. So uh, we got a column there for lift, shift and storage because we're having, paying uh, mm, quarterly bills, aren't we? Yes, uh, on the boat for yard. For the storage. Yes. So the cost to actually lift the boat, to get the crane there to lift it, was £960. Mm -hmm. The cost for transport... It was £635. Yep. So lifting her off uh, at the trailer at the boat yard and putting her on the hard standing cost us 288 So, so far, storage at the yard, nine months, because we've just paid the next three months. Yeah, so months. Each, each three months costs us £1,051. Pounds. Yeah. So in total, lifting, shifting and storage, we've paid £5,116. 60. And by the time we finish, we're going to have to pay another £1,339, which is another three months storage, mm -hmm. and putting her in the, water. in the water. And that is if it only goes into water one time, because uh, if we have any leaks or there's anything that's might not have working, to come back. Yeah. it might have to come back out and uh, get that finished. So fit out. This is a big column. This includes all those things like timber, finishing fabric, foam lining, paint, flooring, kitchen. Everything you need to complete the job, which is not part of the electrical installation or engineering or items on deck. 
one thing that we noticed was that the cost of plywood had absolutely rocketed in the UK. And some of this over veneer plywood we're paying around about, around about £130 per sheet. And also the buffalo board, uh, which is what we've used for flooring, was really expensive. And we actually did ruin one sheet of that, or at least I ruined one sheet of that. <laughs> and it's over, it's, 150 quid a, it's 150 quid a sheet. So um, it really does, um, it, all of that sort of thing does add up. But we did have a few uh, wins, really, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the leatherette, the white leatherette that we're using on the on sides, the, on the, walls, yes. the walls, we managed to get that from a, a manufacturer I used to use in the uh, conference and exhibition industry. And it is actually far retardant, as you would expect. But um, we actually paid around about £189 for a 50 metre roll. It was really good and that time. That, that was yeah. sort of like 10% of what you would pay if you were mm -hmm. buying lining uh, material like that online. And we're happy to share that uh, company with you and it won't be a problem for you to go there and buy it. Yeah. Um, so, so far we have spent £11,374 on materials for the interior finish. Yes, so that's actually building the walls, putting the floor down, doing the sides, um, pretty well everything really that goes into it. And that includes the timber to finish it as well, I think, because we've just done another big timber all day. Mm -hmm. And I think we're fine, we've got enough material now uh, apart from the odd pieces of uh, timber to uh, finish the interior fit out in all three areas. That's the saloon front cabin, pilot house and the... Back out, back out. Another thing which was really good and helpful was the cladding we found, wasn't it, for the ceiling? Oh, for the cladding for the ceiling was amazing. Yeah. Just saved us so much time, time. on working. And uh, it wasn't really too expensive. It wasn't very expensive yeah. and I think it's probably saved us at least two weeks work. Yeah. Uh, being with fitting those big uh, eight by four sheets, grooving them, uh, fitting them, painting them. And also it's much easier to yeah. move them around and yeah. put them up, yeah. isn't it? So, yeah. so that was a real uh, deal breaker for us, that was. Yeah. And uh, very good. actually it looks really good. It looks yeah. superb. Yeah. Very good, yeah. very good. So moving on to electrics. Electrics. So we decided to go for lithium battery bank. Yes. Uh, has these as this is a new installation, it has simple as any other. However, it can be more complicated to retrofit lithium. Yeah, we were going to fit lithium to the cat, and uh, it then we, we sort of kind of discovered it was a little bit more difficult than taking the old batteries out, the lead acid out, and putting lithium in. We had to change the battery charges, the we, cables, the cables. There was all sorts of things going into it, which really meant we had to do a complete electrical upgrade. Mm -hmm. um, and at the time, uh, we, A, we didn't have the time, B, we were in Gibraltar, and uh, it was really all quite expensive. Very, very expensive. Even though it's tax-free, yeah. it's still expensive. It was going to it was gonna cost us around £10,000. Yeah. And it just didn't really add up. So here, with a clean sheet design, uh, the answer really is to go down the lithium route. And uh, we purchased 640 amp hours of lithium batteries at 12 volt and that's 16 batteries in total. Uh, Thunder Sky Winston, which are one of the major manufacturers, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, I stand to be corrected, uh, these are the batteries which are in, normally inside a Victron Energy battery, so that you're buying the actual basic battery as opposed to the case around it. Yeah, because it comes in separate cells. It comes in separate it? cells, absolutely. So we ordered those directly uh, from Hong Kong, and had them delivered, and uh, we had to pay the shipping. And I have to say, they turned up within 10 days. A customer service is 100% excellent. Yeah, uh, she absolutely. was just emailing us every day yeah. uh, with the tracking and yeah. telling where the batteries were. And it was amazing. It was amazing. Ever so good service, absolutely fantastic. And then once they arrived in the UK, we had to pay the VAT. And uh, in total, our 640 amp hours of lithium uh, cost us 3,210 pounds, that's including VAT, which is just over 500 pounds per 100 amp hours. And if you start looking at those sort of costs, uh, lithium is actually becoming quite competitive. Mm -hmm. uh, we certainly have some quality AGM batteries and things like that. We are also installing a Victron Energy System, so we were quite lucky in that that we managed to open a trade account with Battery Megastore here in the UK. So far we have spent £2,502 on the system. It is a comprehensive system and includes three battery chargers, three MPPT solar controllers and a 
top of the range quattro triche inverted charges switch. Yeah, there's also a lot of fuses, uh, buzz bars and um, switches and things like that that go into the system and also a management system. So it's going to be a cracking system. Uh, it's going to give us 12 volt all round about and it's also going to be giving us uh, 12, uh, 20, 240 volts. It's uh, going to automatically switch between shore power, generator and lithium batteries. And we'll be looking into the installation of this in a lot more detail, probably around about April as we start to get into it. Uh, we've got a bit more to do to the boat first before we actually before, before get Before we track that one, yeah. yes. A lot of people suggested we should go down a 24 uh, volt route. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yes, that's quite, totally understandable. Understand the reasons why. And uh, yeah, we could have done that. But uh, there was quite a lot of equipment bought for the boat, uh, which came with the boat, which was um, 200. Uh, uh, sorry, 12, 20, volt. 20, yeah, 12, volt. 12 volt. Yeah, things like the windlass and the toilet and uh, various things like that, and the boiler, for example. So it kind of like was going to get into a lot of money to change it. Um, we also did solar. Yeah, we also purchased and installed three solar panels, 1,640 watts in total, at the cost of £555. Solar has really come down. It in really price. has come yeah. down in price. <laughs> I mean, that is absolutely stonking, I think. Uh, absolute bargain. Three panels, and uh, they're big panels as well. And that was as much as we could get on the pilot house roof. We couldn't get any more. Any more, no. It's and we didn't want to have it on the uh, deck. On the deck, no. But we want a, a very clean deck. Yeah. We want a very clean boat, yes. So, so, so far, we have spent £7,986. Uh, and we have a way what to go. What a way to go, <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, we still got to buy um, uh, things like cable for all the batteries and all those connectors, which is going to which is going to add up, to be perfectly honest, because it's going to be heavy-duty cable. And we got this Lynx distributor uh, to purchase, which is a couple of hundred quid. But we have put in all LED lights and uh, things like that, so it's really been an awful lot. It's very, it's going to look beautiful because we've got all the little lights in the roof, and then there's LED coloured LEDs LED colored light, yeah. down the sides. You can play, like you can yeah. play wherever yeah. you want. If that's it's really going to be, yeah. it be fantastic. Yeah. So now we're going to engineering. Yes, engineering. So really, this is everything that's not electrical, so to speak. Uh, this includes things like pipes and radiators, heating system, electronics and navigation, pumps, through hulls and water system. We still have some big items to buy, like the chlorifier and uh, the main water pump and the bilge pumps. So this figure is going to go up quite dramatically, I think. Mm. Uh, so some of this work has been carried by the yard. For example, they have completed the gas installation and they are doing at the moment uh, the diesel installation yes. for the engine, generator and the pillar. We, we originally, we, were, we never intended to do absolutely everything no. ourselves no. and we were planning on hiring a carpenter for at least a month, if not two months, to help us with the interior fit out. But sort of kind of due to the circumstances at the moment, um, it was very difficult to find anybody and uh, working with other people and everything with all the... Um, oh, the closed space yeah. we thought was a yeah. bit it, uh, it, risky, yeah. so we decided yeah. not yeah. to. So we decided to hack on with that ourselves. Yeah. And so we did actually, that made us have a bit of spare cash, I suppose. Uh, not that there is any spare cash, but <laughs> it kind of like we felt, didn't feel so bad getting the yard to do some of the installation work. Then we know that that sort of work has been done um, professionally. professionally and uh, it was something we didn't feel as comfortable doing, to, to do be it, honest. Yes. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. so, so far we spent uh, £2,532, but yep. this amount will go up. This amount is going to go up. Because uh, from the boat yard we have been charged uh, uh, yet just for the... Materials. Yeah. yeah. So there'd be the labour as well. Yeah. And to be fair, they're not cheap, are they? No, they're no, not very no. cheap. So that leaves on deck. So what does on deck cover? Uh, it covers the building of the pilot house. Um, we had to completely build the roof. Uh, it didn't exist at all. Uh, there was no glass for in, it, in it, for example. So we had it all double glazed. Uh, this also included all the hatches and vents. Um, buying the anchor, uh, railings around the aft, um, cockpit, and it will also include things like the binnami, won't it? So there is actually quite a lot uh, still to do there. All the fiberglass for the roof cost us uh, just a shade under £500, didn't mm. it? Which I think was rather a lot really, but we had an awful lot of material left over. Yeah. We could have done the whole thing again. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we probably overcooked it a little bit. 
Yeah, but things like the anchor, we bought it in marketplace, and yeah. like the Davids, we bought it in marketplace. Yes. So it was very, very, very good. good. Uh, yeah, very good. Yeah. It was very good. Yeah. Uh, another thing we had to buy was some paint. Uh, the actual is exactly the same paint that the boat is painted in, because there are areas that need painting, and there's always areas that need touching up as well. So um, yeah, that was actually really quite expensive for four liters. It was 194. Uh, pounds. Uh, it's a two-pack polyolefin paint and it's exactly the same mix and so uh, certainly the cream we've used is exactly the same colour. Yes, it? Yeah. yeah, yes. So, so far on deck we have spent £2,250. Okay, so just in case you haven't been keeping a tally as we've gone through this, uh, let's go through it one more time. Yeah. So, so far the boat has cost us a total of £89,262. We had originally aimed to spend around about 100000 100000 was our, our budget. What do you think? I think we're going to be there or just 5000 uh, Yeah, I think, I think uh, we're going to slip over it. Um, but there are some things that we're going to buy which aren't really necessary, like we're having a bin we put on the back uh, cabin. Yes. Uh, on the deck area there. Uh, we're also buying a rib, a rib. and uh, an outboard motor. So some of these things are kind of extras anyway. Yeah. Uh, but I reckon we're going to get it in at around about 105,000. And to be quite honest, I think it's one hell of a boat. Yeah. Yeah, it's one hell of a boat. Turning out so beautiful. Yeah, really, really absolutely nice. Absolutely lovely. Yes. Um, yes. So, we have been having a couple of questions. <laughs> <laughs> so, when is it, the main question is, when is it going to the water? Well, originally we, had, we were joking and said we'll get it finished by Christmas, but we never, we never really thought we would. No, no, no. It and was, it was never the, really the, the major jobs by Christmas, yeah. which, which we have done. We have done. We still got a bit to go. Yeah, we, we still have. We are a bit to. behind, I think. Yeah. We have around eight to ten weeks to finish the boat. That's all we think. We think if we work really quite hard at it, um, work full days, five days a week, um, we're thinking around about uh, eight weeks. Yeah, so we are going back from Portugal, where we are at the moment, uh, in March. We are starting our way back. It will take around two weeks for us to go back because we are visiting some friends on the way, some followers of us that have invited us to go over and see them, and we are always very happy to do that. Um, and then... Uh, well, so we say, say around about the 14th, 10th or 14th of March, we'll start to get back Yes. In. And so we're looking kind of like uh, the beginning of May. Yeah, so, so the big splash. beginning of May is going to mm. be the big splash. You're very welcome to come and see it, if yeah. the boat's going to sink. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, it will be absolutely fantastic. And by then, the weather will have improved enormously in yeah. the UK. That's uh, one thing we're not rushing, is because of the weather. Yeah. We don't want to be in the cold. No, honestly. no, no, no. Yeah. So we'll see how we get on. Yeah. Another couple of questions that people have asked is, what do you intend to do with her? Uh, your sort of cruising grounds and that sort of thing. Well, this has been a very complicated story, to be honest, because for those who have followed us with our uh, ocean crossings, where we spent three years on the catamaran, Carla did say on the way back from uh, the uh, from Bermuda crossing the Atlantic uh, that she would never do another ocean uh, crossing. crossing again. And so we looked at what else we could do uh, in a boating lifestyle, and that's why we came up with having the barge. And uh, we also wanted to, uh, to have a project for a little while to do, as opposed to just sort of cruising around. And that's why we chose to do a project boat. Mm -hmm. And it could have been a second hand, uh, an old boat, mm -hmm. you know, uh, mm -hmm. as opposed to a newer boat. But anyway, we chose the boat we chose. And uh, what's our intention? Our intention was... Our intention was to go up to Oxford, down to London, yeah. and then cross, cross the, the, uh, the channel and go to Europe, yeah. uh, starting in France and uh, do the... The French canals French and canals uh, rivers and of Europe and that sort of thing. Yeah. But uh, Carla's now had a, a rethink on her uh, situation. <laughs> Everything is my fault, okay? <laughs> I admit that. And uh, Carla would really like to go back to sea. So we are, uh, uh, we are going to use the barge, we're going to take it out for a good uh, length of time, but uh, inevitably it is going to get sold and uh, we are going to buy another catamaran and go back to do a complete uh, global circumnavigation yes, yeah. uh, in, a few, in a couple of years' time. Yeah. We've got a target for that and uh, we've got to get some money up together in order to do it, but in the long run that really is our, our intention, our plan. 
Another question is, do you have any advice for somebody who's thinking about doing a barbage project and uh, would you do it again? Well, I, I will answer that, we will do it again, no. <laughs> it, uh, when you start a project like this, people say to you, do you realise how big it is? Do you realise what you're taking on? Well, yes, you kind of think you do, and you think, well, yeah, I know this is going to be a big project, and it's going to be even bigger than I think it is. But in reality, it turns out to be even bigger, bigger. still. And it's enormous. And, um, and one, one of the things that put me down at some point was that we're going to use a carpenter to help us with the heavy work because for me a couple of things are really 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 heavy to do and uh, we couldn't do it due COVID the situation so we couldn't do that so we end up doing all that heavy job mm. and uh, that uh, put me down a bit yeah it? yeah, yeah. Um, so would I do it again no I don't think I would do it again uh, to be honest have I enjoyed it I found it absolutely fascinating I've learned so much about uh, plumbing and electrics and bug building and stuff like that uh, which is really beneficial and uh, I would take on another project but um, I certainly wouldn't take on another one of these. I think also if you're thinking about doing this uh, give yourself plenty of time and uh, really try and work out uh, the budget in a little bit more detail. Mm. Ours was a bit of a sort of mm think about it and uh, put a figure down. And I think we are close, uh, uh, really, to our overall budget of what we planned. But uh, really do do your work on that one, because depending on what your boat is, um, you know, what you need to do, whether you have to, it's, it's an old boat and you need to do welding and plating and things like that. So yeah, I think uh, we answer all the questions. Yeah. If you have more questions, just leave on the comments below. We are happy to reply to all of them. Thank you. Bye for now.